Hey y'all, I'm Skaji. I'm a practicing witch and a professional tarot nerd. I'm glad you're here. Have you ever had life throw you a curve? I have. The past couple of weeks have been curvy indeed. I know you've gotten used to a card of the week, and I'm sorry this week, though, I don't have one. But I did want to leave you with a little something. So instead of a card of the week, I'm going to have a, a little something about what makes the tarot the tarot. And then after that, stay tuned for a brief discussion of deck maintenance. Now rest assured, next week I'll be back on track with another card of the week. I get questions from time to time about the differences between kinds of card decks which are used for divination. These days we have tarot decks, oracle decks, Lenormand decks. There's even a system in India where parrots pull the cards. I'll put a couple of links in the description if you'd like to explore more about parrots. Reading cards for divination was an adaptation of card games, not the other way around. That's right, folks. Our divination cards had as their earliest ancestors playing card games. Most divination decks in common usage today derive from the tarot, which has only been around about 600 years, give or take. The main difference between these decks is primarily in the techniques and focus of their use, as well as the number of cards and organization. For a deck to be tarot, it follows a standard organization itself. 78 cards ordered in five suits, 22 cards in the major arcana, the greater secrets, and the minor arcana, or the lesser secrets, are 56 cards in four suits of 14 cards each. There are 10 numbered cards and four court cards. The use of and techniques of the tarot have evolved over the last 150 years or so, give or take. It seems that the contemporary use of the tarot, at least to me, has evolved to be more intuitive and less formulaic. Does that mean that intuitive approaches are better? Well, it all depends on how you use the tool. And that's what all these divination decks are, after all. They're merely tools. My granddaddy told me one time, use the right tool for the job. All this being said, tarot isn't the only tool in the cardamancy toolbox. That's fancy talk for card divination. Our modern playing cards themselves are derived from the tarot, and those 54 cards, including the jokers, can be used for divination. When used in this way, from my own experience, the interpretations tend to be a bit more static and less intuitive. There are also Lenormand decks, which are also derived from our modern playing cards. These decks typically only have 36 to 42 cards, and they, they don't use reversals and are interpreted in a more straightforward way, and often pairings of cards are stressed. A valid argument can be made, if you're the argue type, that all card decks used for divination are oracle decks. We've all heard of the Oracle of Delphi, right? The term Oracle of Delphi describes both a place and a person. The place was the temple of Apollo at Delphi, that's in Greece, and the person whom the Greeks called the Pythia was the priestess of Apollo who delivered prophecies. Oracle itself is from Latin origin, from oraculum, for divine announcement. What I mean by Oracle deck is a little more nuanced and to me means a specific type of deck. In one article I read, the author classified Lenormand decks as oracle decks. But to me, Lenormand doesn't fit the bill for my definition of oracle deck since it has a more standardized structure. Oracle decks don't have a set number of cards or a traditional format. Each deck is unique. While oracle decks are quite free-flowing and the cards more straightforward, they, to me they tend to be less nuanced than many tarot decks. I have a couple of oracle decks, and I will occasionally reference them for specific direction, but my go-to is the tarot. Is one kind of deck better than another? Well, that depends. One might be better for me, while another might be better for you.
It's important when studying any form of divination to stretch ourselves, and learn as much as we can about our tools and ourselves. The true artistry lies not in the tool nor in the user. True artistry lies in the synergy which grows out of the relationship between tool and user, between deck and reader. Now, every good relationship requires some work, and that includes the relationships we build with our tarot decks. Now, I feel that a tarot deck is a tool. And just like a painter cares for their brushes, a musician cares for their instruments, and a carpenter cares for their saws and hammers, a reader must also care for their tool, their tarot deck. Now, while I do feel that a tarot deck right out of the box is just a pack of cards, when we work with a deck, and I mean really work with it, I feel that it takes on a little bit of our spirit, whatever that means. The decks that, that I work with on a regular basis have developed, in a sense, their own personalities. This deck, my, my Muka Tarot, is my, oh, honey, everything gonna be okay kind of deck. But my, my Universal Weight deck is straightforward and professional. Now this Robin Wood deck is calm, peaceful, and it's got a sense of humor about it, too. My Wildwood deck, on the other hand, is blunt. If you need it, this deck will punch you right in the throat. It really has a way of calling us out on our own BS. Now, I've used this deck for quite a few years, and, and it's a good one. But it's kind of like me in some ways. It's getting a bit, well, geriatric. I can tell when it's going to rain in two ways. My knees begin to complain, and my wildwood deck gets a bit chunky. You see, this deck reacts to changes in humidity, and it starts to shuffle poorly. And they get clingy, and they start to shuffle in chunks. Now, I could retire my old friend, and I will someday, but it's not quite time for that yet. So what do I do? There are a few pages on the interwebs about taking care of a tarot deck, and some of them even have some good information. But I was really surprised at how little information I found online. There's probably some sort of social reason for that. Maybe it's because all of the influence of a consumer culture, the just get another one mentality. And after all, tarot decks aren't that expensive these days. But I don't know. I remember my mother, every month or so, would clean out her clothes dryer. She didn't just clean out the lint filter. She did that after every load. No, she would get into the works of the dryer and clean out the lint from inside the thing. And when I was a kid, this seemed like a lot of unnecessary work to me. When I got older, though, I figured out that all that preventative maintenance was the reason she was able to keep a dry, dryer running in tip-top shape for over 30 years. Sure, a part here or there had to be replaced, but the thing just kept going. It wasn't until the parts weren't available anymore that Mother and Daddy replaced it. And you know what? She continued with the monthly PM on that new dryer, too. If we as readers take a little time to care for the physical needs of our tools, our tarot decks, they will be there for us much longer. And the care we put into them has an energetic component as well. It adds a little more of our spirit each time. Now I'm going to leave you with that while I get back on track. The thing I do when the old wildwood gets a little chunky is I pull out the good old fanning powder. Fanning powder is something that professional magicians, uh, the stage kind, not the wizard kind, that's what they use to help keep their cards in shape and help them fan better. It makes them easier to use doing card tricks. I had heard of fanning powder when I was a kid going through my magician phase. The stage kind. The other one came later. Anyway, although I, although I knew about fanning powder, um, it, it was after I'd been reading tarot professionally for a few years that I thought it might help me with my 
chunky old friend here. You can get this stuff at a, at a magic shop, the stage kind, or from many online retailers. And there are a few brands, but they should all work about the same. Fanning powder is zinc stearate. Um, this compound is hydrophobic. No, it doesn't have rabies. That's just chemist speak for repels water. Um, this is handy since water is one of the reasons cards get chunky. Another reason for that chunk is that uh, human hands are oily. Even when we wash regularly, the cards will still pick up oils from our hands. And over time, this can cause a, a little chunk in the deck. Fanning powder helps with that too, acting like a lubricant between the cards. Uh, so that way they don't chafe. So before this starts to get weird weirder. Um, a word of warning. You might be thinking that uh, talc or cornstarch or another such thing we might use on our personal selves could uh, serve our tarot decks too. Don't. Don't do it. Those powders are hydrophilic. They like water and will absorb it. And uh, they'll add water to the cards. And we all know that water and paper don't mix. Now, I said to myself, Self, it's about time for some uh, good card PM. Why don't you uh, show the folks at home how it's done? And, uh, and then I says to myself, Self, that's a great idea. To which myself replied, Self, get on with it. So I've done this a couple of different ways. Um, I've got this, uh, this one little container here that I've used. Um, and then uh, here's this great big old uh, resealable plastic bag. So let's see how this thing here is done. So here I've got that wildwood tarot, and it has been humid here the past couple of days. I'm going to demonstrate a chunky shuffle. You can see how we got little, little clumps in there. One of the things that can help with that is this fanning powder. You may want to uh, split the deck up. When you do this, so the idea is going to be to get a little bit of this founding powder on each card. Now, this stuff, it don't take much, but it does take enough. What's that mean? It's like when my mother was teaching me to make biscuits. I had my notebook all handy. I was going to write that recipe down. She says, uh, he starts going to town, putting the flour in the bowl and the shortening and the buttermilk and started mixing it all up. And I said, wait a minute, how much did you use? And without a sense of irony whatsoever, she turned to me and said the right amount. So it doesn't take much, but it does take enough. Now we're going to seal our little bag here. We're going to leave this little bit open. Hope you can see all of that. And we want to, instead of letting air out, we want to put some air in. Right? And uh, I wish I brought me a straw. Because we want to have some room in there for the powder and the cards to get all mixed together. And you can see how it's starting to get on there a little bit. I want to mix all that up. And I bet you I'm going to get this white powder all over this black tablecloth. Gonna do that for a little bit, <clears throat> and you may want to uh, fan the cards out a little bit. Make sure we're getting that powder all over the place. You have to practice it until you get it the way you like it. Now, as you can see. Cards 
to get your powder on both sides. So it may take you a while to get it all over. And you see that powder coming off of there like that. It gets all over everything. But it's well worth it. It feels kind of soapy. Sterate is a, used in soaps. Kinds of sterates, anyway. So I told you I was going to get this stuff all over. And you want to have you a, a cloth. This is one of my good old-fashioned hankies. And you're going to wipe the cards off. You're not trying to, you're just trying to get the excess off of there. It's still going to have that sort of silky kind of feel. And you're going to do that with the whole deck. And you want to be gentle. We're not trying to scrub the paint off. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing. As you can see, I'm getting some of that stuff off of there. What I am going to demonstrate for you. Is we're gonna. That won't do that once you wipe every card. It does look kind of fun though to me. But as you can see, shuffles a lot better now. And now we have another happy tarot deck. I think it's very important that, that we care for our tools. Even if you don't read professionally, if tarot or oracle or Lenormand, or even just play in cards, if they're a part of your spiritual path, I think it's more important even that we take care of those tools. After all, even cleaning out the dryer can be a spiritual act when we approach it that way. Thank you for spending some of your time with me today. I hope you've enjoyed your time, and if you have, please like, subscribe, share, comment. I'm Skaji, 